Hey guys, today's the 17th of August, it's a Thursday, it's 2023, and tomorrow I am uh, I'm jumping on an airplane, I'm flying to Anchorage where I'll meet up with Jaime, and he and I together will then uh, fly to Prudhoe Bay, board a cub, and fly into the Brooks Range where Jaime drew a grizzly bear tag, and he is uh, he's also going to hunt doll sheep up there. So and I'm going to tag along with the camera, I'm going to film him hunting those two animals. Uh, if we see a caribou, we may kill a caribou. Uh, and then what I'm super excited about is, is I'd like to kill a wolf. And so I'm gonna be hunting wolves while Jaime is hunting those other animals. I uh, bought a howler. And uh, hopefully there'll be some carnage in the Brooks Range. Um, but this is a seven day backpack hunt. We were hunting with our friend Marcel Powell. He's the guide. I have no idea who the outfitter he's working for is, but Marcel is the guide. Um, we've hunted with him in Mexico in the past and he's, he's an outstanding hunter. So we're excited to get up there, excited to run, run into to Marcel again and get into the mountains. Um, this right here is basically what I'm going to be carrying with me for seven days. I think there's a couple of things that I'm a little bit iffy on, uh, because what I do know about the Brooks range that, the, that this is a very hard hunt. Uh, we're carrying all of our hunting gear, camera gear, food for seven days on a sheep hunt. And that could mean walking 10 miles up to the head of a drainage to look at the, the top of the drainage and you see nothing and you gotta walk out. Uh, and then you just do it again the next day. Like, like Brooks Range sheep hunts, uh, there are a lot of miles, a lot of elevation gain, and you carry everything with you the whole time. So uh, kind of my, my, I don't know, the foundation, I guess, of the gear on this hunt is going to be my Stone Glacier 7900. Uh, this is an expedition sized pack. And so I'm not really worried about space. I'm going to have space for everything. What I'm worried about is the weight. Uh, I did this hunt once before I was hired to film a sheep hunt in the Brooks range in, I don't know, 2010, maybe is it? it's a while ago. And the, the mountains just absolutely killed me. Uh, back then I was not prepared. I thought I was in shape and, and you get there and you quickly learn that you are not in shape. And so I'm hoping that, that, uh, that I'll be good this time. So I'm going to try to kind of keep my weight down. Um, and, and so some of these choices may end up changing from what I actually carry, but that is, that is the, ba the, the basics of it is the Sun Glacier 7900. It's a lightweight minimalist pack made specifically for long expedition sheep hunts. And, uh, and so yeah, that's that's gonna what everything everything's got to fit inside. Um, and then I guess uh, starting from the ground up, I've got the crispy. These are the Berkstall Pros. I took these to New Zealand a couple of months ago, and they were amazing. Uh, we did a lot of water crossings. We got rained on, and my feet never once got wet. It's a stiff boot. It's perfect for the mountains. It's got a shank, uh, metal shank. It's got full rubber rand uh and not too heavy like it's it's just average average weight for um this type of boot super comfortable i got zero blisters and it wasn't wet once and so i'm taking those again the burkstall pros along with so that and then the other part of my my footwear system are the stone glacier gaiters and i absolutely love these these are these are made to be filled repairable so you, if you wear gaiters a lot, you know, like the main failure point on a gaiter is a strap that goes down beneath your feet. Well, like they kind of solved that problem by making this filled repairable. If you, if you run into problems with a strap, you could just put new webbing, you do something, you can figure it out so that your gaiters keep working. Um, this is a really great design on these Stone Glacier gaiters um, and I really like them. So those along with my boots, that's how I'm gonna keep my feet dry. Uh, this, these are, these are Crocs. These may end up not making it. Marcel says I don't really need them, uh, but I would like to have them just in case we're, we're doing a lot of river crossings uh, and just for, for comfort around camp. So those may go, they may not. Uh, we'll see how heavy the pack is. Those are my Crocs. And then uh, socks, I've got four pairs of socks. All my clothes are gonna get rolled up in this, uh, are gonna get folded, stuffed into this uh, roll top dry bag and stuffed in the pack so they'll all stay together. So I've got four pairs of socks. Two of them are lighter weights, the, uh, the mid-weight Stone Glacier wool socks, and then a couple of darn tufts. So the socks, I've got four pairs. 
uh, underwear. I have I have three change of underwear, so four total. The one I wear into the mountains, and then uh, three changes of underwear, and then I've got three T-shirts that I will take. These are just lightweight, moisture-wicking T-shirts. That'll be kind of my base layer, and then for my pants, I'm taking the De Havilland, the original De Havilland, the heavy one. Um, I really love these pants. These are still my favorite, even though they are a little heavy and a little bit warm for most of the stuff we do in Arizona. Uh, temperatures right now are looking like they're gonna be in the 50s, like the highs in the mid to upper 50s. I think this is gonna be a perfect pant for the Brooks range. Last time I was there, I wore an insulated pant from Arcteryx. It was super stretchy and they were awesome, but these are not insulated. These are gonna be ideal. So Merca gloves, always. And then I've got also a, a midweight, ins like a midweight insulation layer. Um, and a zip off pant, those will go as well. So that's kind of my, my main clothes setup, uh, along with, you know, just always my puffies. Puffies always make it, both the pants and the jacket. Those are going for sure. And then I've got a neck gaiter. Also that'll go, uh, I figure that may come in handy if the bugs are bad or something. So, and it weighs virtually nothing. So, and then in terms of rain gear, I'm taking the Stone Glacier M5 setup, pant and jacket. Uh, these did really well in New Zealand in all of the rain. And so I'm guessing they're gonna be just fine in the Brooks range. And then for keeping my pack dry, I've got the Stone Glacier uh, pack tarp. And then I'm taking this marsupial uh, rain fly. And because I'll be carrying my camera on a clip on my shoulder, and so if, when it starts raining, I'll be able to just put this marsupial rain fly directly over my camera and keep my camera out of the rain. So, and then taking these for insulation and waterproofing for my hands. So those are also the Stone Glacier. I, I got the mittens. Um, ten, mittens tend to be a little bit warmer than the gloves are. So that brings us to gear. And for my gear, always, I've got set of trekking poles and on these trekking poles, I'm gonna wrap uh, some electrical tape just so they have electrical tape and we'll also put a GoPro mount there. And that's like one of the main cameras, like we always, always carry a GoPro. That feels like that is running. Nope, it's warm. So anyways, yeah, uh, GoPro on a trekking pole and trekking poles just cause those are a must. Uh, Marcel in reached me. He said, bring a, bring a lightweight fishing rod. And so I'm taking just the lightweight spinner, spinning rod here with, I've got five very small ultra light, uh, spin spinners. And I'm guessing that we're going to run into a lot of grayling. So hopefully we'll be eating grayling most nights. The last time I was there, I mean, we caught like eight, nine, 10 pound Arctic char, just a beautiful fish. We're not going to catch fish like that off this, so I'm, I'm assuming it's grayling. I didn't get a, a confirmation on that. Um, got a couple of hydro slings, and these will carry my Nalgene's, and these will be strapped to my pack. We'll keep those full. Just I want to stay hydrated. I don't tend to hydrate well, um, and, and so this is going to be this trip. I want to change that. I am going to focus on hydrating. I'm also carrying this with me. This is just like a little collapsible hydration. I'm going to, I'm going to use this for my hydration packets. I'm taking uh, hydration packs from Scratch Labs. It's what I use for cycling. Um, and I'm using the Wellness one, which is very high sodium content, uh, 80 calories, 70 calories per packet, but very high sodium content, just like higher than normal sodium content. So I can make sure that I, I, I do get rehydrated well. And I'm gonna keep that separate from my Nalgene's. Just use that right there for the hydration packs. Uh, camera gear. Uh, I'm taking my Sony a7S III, uh, always, that's like my main camera. And I haven't decided what my, my main lens will be, whether it'll be a 35 millimeter or a 55 millimeter. Um, but I'll take a, you know, a prime that I use as a main lens. I'm also gonna carry this 100 millimeter macro and a 14 millimeter wide angle lens. And those will be the three lenses that I carry. Uh, Rode Video Mic Pro for audio, GoPro as always. Uh, and I've got on this, GoPro, um, I've got the media mod on it with the microphone, and this is, is surprisingly outstanding audio quality. Like even in the rain coming down, the wind in New Zealand, 
we were very impressed with the audio quality coming out of the media mod on a GoPro. It's well worth a little bit of extra money to grab that. Uh, for electronics, carrying a solar, solar panel, uh, just a, a very small, probably a 15 watt solar panel, and uh, an anchor battery pack as well. That, this way we can keep camera batteries charged, phones charged, because our main like sort of uh, animal cameras is gonna be an iPhone uh, on the MagView scope adapter. Uh, so digiscoping animals, digiscoping kill shots. So we need to make sure that we keep our iPhones charged. Um, other electronics I've got is my satellite communicator and then lav mics. So I'm not sure if we'll use the lav mics, but the way virtually nothing, so I'm gonna carry them just in case the situation calls for it. I can, I can lav up Jaime, I can lav up Kiwi and uh, we can get some really good audio. So I've got uh, just a, a very simple kill kit. It's just got my Havilon and my, my scalpel blades, along with like some earplugs, some gloves. So just a very basic kill kit. And then this is more of like camp gear, first aid gear. Um, I've got some bandages, some, uh, some ibuprofen, some painkillers in case we, we run into problems. I've got a suture kit in here, uh, a couple of headlamps and uh, a solar lantern from goal, goal zero. I'm not sure if I'll take that either. That may end up getting cut. Um, optics, I'm carrying, as of right now, I'm gonna carry the Swaro EL12s, 1250s. Those are gonna go. I'm using the Asiac, Asiac clamp that I can use to, it's just an Arca Swiss plate, Arca Swiss bottom. It'll just go directly into the, uh, the tripod head. And it's super lightweight, super simple, nothing goes wrong with it. So that's what I'm taking as of now. There's a chance we'll end up with the Zulu 10 HDX if they make it here uh, today or tomorrow. So I'm not sure. Toiletries, I've got very basic toiletries. I'm taking one eight pack of dude showers and then uh, basic toiletries in this bag. If we just got a stick of deodorant, uh, toothpaste and a toothbrush. That's and some bandages in here. So that's all I'm doing for toiletries, keeping it very simple. Uh, in case we get stuck in the tent for weather, I've got a, a lightweight notepad. I like to write notes, uh, make plans, that kind of stuff. Uh, and then on my phone, I've got a Kindle app. So I've got a, a book that I'm in the middle of reading. So if we do get stuck in the tent, I'll have something to read and I'll be able to write. And that'll be kind of how I entertain myself in the tent. Uh, personal protection in the Brooks Range and we are hunting grizzly bears. So on the bottom of my chest pack, I will carry my Sig Legion 10 millimeter. Uh, that's gonna go, that's just, it's flying in a TSA pack, of course, but when we get up there, I'll attach to the bottom of my chest pack. Um, I've got some basic kitchen stuff, a couple of coffee things, some, um, some oil, just because when Jaime does kill a dollar ram, like the one thing that I do want to do is be able to cook that, uh, cook some back straps really well. I've also got some, some protein creamer that I put in coffee in the morning. Um, so that's going as like just a very basic, kitchen kit. Um, most everything we're doing is dehydrated. It's just boiling water, but, but I will take a little bit of that. I've got some seasoning, some oil. We'll eat back straps and we'll drink larceny. Um, when it kills, I've also got some screwball in there so that, that when we are on the animal, uh, before we start dressing it, we can shoot some screwball. That'll be interesting. That'll be good. Uh, going to take this jet boil. This is the, the lightest weight jet boil I think they make. That's the tiny mighty micro or whatever they call it. Um, I'm going to take that with me. May not end up needing that. That may stay at the hangar. Not sure, but I figure I'd take it. It's always nice to have two ways to, like I'm sure Kiwi's got a stove, but it is nice to have two stoves to boil water when there's, when there's a couple of dudes. Titanium mug and titanium spoon. That's, that's all my kitchen stuff. And then uh, sleeping, I've got Sea to Summit pillow, inflatable pillow and inflatable mattress. And then the Stone Glacier. 15 degree sleeping bag, Stone Glacier two person tent. So that's kind of my sleep setup. And then last but not least, I've got my food packs. So I went ahead and, and prepackaged these into uh, gallon zipper bags. And it's got, it's basically, it's got, I've got seven of them. I've got, actually, I've got eight, uh, but I put all of my food for the day in each of them. And so in here, I've got my peak refuel that I'll eat at night, a meal to go that I'll eat for like during the day, like mid morning. Um, and that together, that's like, like 16, 1700 calories. And then I've also got a pack of 
just sort of goodies, um, some sweets, some, some candies, uh, Starburst, Snickers, M&Ms. Um, and then I've also in here, I've got like my scratch uh, hydration packs that are going there. So I've got, I've got eight of them. It's a seven day hunt. I'm gonna carry eight of them just in case. Uh, if, I, if I had stronger legs, if I'd been rocky and if I had stronger legs, I'd probably take, you know, another one or two, uh, you know, nine or 10 of them. The last time we were in the Brooks Range, uh, when we finally, like at the end of the hunt, we got to the pickup point and there was a group there that had been there for three days and they had run out of food and they were very hungry. So I always like to take an extra day or two of food um, just because you never know if you're gonna get stuck out there. Now granted, hopefully we'll be able to catch, uh, we'll be able to catch some fish and uh, we'll have a doll ram, uh, possibly a grizzly bear or something, a caribou or something. We'll have other ways to, to feed ourselves, but I'm gonna carry extra just in case. So that's my gear. It's all gonna fit in that 7900 backpack and uh, hopefully it's not, not too heavy. Hopefully I'm able to, to make this and, and I guess we'll know in about 10 days. So I'll see you on the other side. Appreciate you watching. Mm -hmm.